Hello and welcome to The Pulse. Inevitably, last Sunday's LegCo by-election in the New Territories East constituency attracted much attention. It was held in the aftermath of the Moncock clashes and there was speculation over whether this would be highly damaging to the Democrats. However, nothing of the kind happened. The anti-government camp's share of the vote rose considerably and the election was won by Alvin Young, a young barrister from the Civic Party. Perhaps more surprising was the strong showing of the localist group Hong Kong Indigenous. It's hard to see how this result is being interpreted by the government and the chief executive and whether it will lead to a reassessment of their highly confrontational approach towards localist aspirations. Around 434,000 people voted in last Sunday's Legislative Council by-election in the New Territories East constituency. Despite fears of a split vote among the Democrats, the Civic Party's Alvin Young defeated runner-up Holden Chow, a pro-establishment DAB candidate, by more than 10,000 votes. Alvin Young's current seat in LegCo is a short-term one. He'll have to go to the polls again for the full LegCo elections in September. On Wednesday, the morning before being sworn in, he went to City One Shatin to thank those who'd voted for him. His electoral support in this area was particularly strong. In fact, this is only the second day um, uh, since my election result was announced on the 29th. So, um, I'm quite tired, I'm overwhelmed, and I understand there's a battle going on and I have to get in right away. The Democrats have been filibustering. Uh, I will join this because I see this as part of my duties to safeguard uh, the netizens' liberty. Those 160,000 votes were not solely because of Alvin Young or the Civic Party. They voted to us just because they wished this seat to be kept on our hands and not to be fell on the DAB. So, so I, I understand the dynamics. While Alvin Young received 37% of the total votes in the by-election and Holden Chow 346 Third place, Edward Leung, with 15%, also had significant support. It was the first time at the polls for his group, Hong Kong Indigenous, a self-described localist organisation whose members were arrested for alleged involvement in the Mongkok clashes three weeks ago. It's a new force. We localists, we are not minority anymore. Although we do not have enough votes to get a seat, but People know that our voice, our ideology and our platform is important to Hong Kong's future. So we get quite a lot number of folks. And we can foresee that in September, localists can gain more seats in each district. Well, with us in the studio are Benny Tai, Associate Professor of the Faculty of Law at the University of Hong Kong, and political commentator Chris Young. Chris Young, uh, you've been watching elections for far more years than it's polite to talk about. Yeah. Um, what is your takeaway, your main takeaway, from what happened last Sunday at the by-election? Well, despite a number of uh, seemingly negative factors for the pan-democrats, like the filibustering, like the Hmong Kok uh, unrest, uh, the pan-democrats uh, kept the seat and also kept the vote share. That is roughly 55 something percent compared to the poor establishments, uh, 40 something percent. So, first, big picture remains large, largely unchanged. But, secondly, of course, the most interesting and most talked about point is the votes received by um, the, the radical localists. Uh, Edward Leung uh, got something like 15 percent vote share and 66,000 uh, votes. Whether that reflects an increase or rise of power of uh, the so-called third power or radical uh, localists, which uh, will get 
stronger, bigger, and will also uh, whether that will also take away votes from the pan democrats. Uh, that I think remains to be seen. But of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, publicity and a lot of talk about about that. I think that will uh, strengthen the the localists, and also that will put pressure on the moderate um, pan democrats. Now, Benny Tai, you've been looking ahead mm. to the September, the full elections yes, for right. LegCo, and uh, you, you've been expressing concern from the pro-Democrat side of a lack of coordination, have come up with this thunderquick plan. Can you explain what that is? And also explain why you think the Democrats have been pretty lukewarm towards it. Well, um, I think I agree with the observation about the result of the uh, by-election. And actually, there's a clear alarm made now to the uh, pandemic. Uh, political parties that they are going to get lesser votes, but we see that the, the the situation is that might be more parties or groups that are going to put forward candidates in the coming election. So that create a, a need for the for a coordination uh, among the different uh, pan democratic camp uh, groups, including the moderates as well as the radical. And uh, if they fail to do so, the chance that they may lose the seats to the establishment or surely to the localist groups. So it's now a, a, a very clear demand and need that we have to come together to find a solution to but face a problem. You ask that why they are kind of rather lukewarm about the plan of coordination. I could understand that because from the short-term interests of the political parties that their concern is to how to keep their own seats. And if they have the confidence that they will be able to keep their own seats now, even though the other pandemic parties may lose their seat, that will not hurt them immediately or directly. But we have to look at a situation from a longer perspective, that if in the long run uh, the pandemic failed to get that one-third or failed to maintain that one-third uh, um, uh, significant minority, the Lesser Council, that will hurt the pandemic as a whole. And so is now we need to see things beyond the immediate uh, interest, but have to see things uh, kind of in the long-term interest. Christian, can I, can I ask you, I mean, uh, Benny Tai is talking about lack of um, coordination in, in the so-called anti-government side, but also on the pro-government side, we're hearing of the Hung Yi Kuk putting up its own candidates. We're hearing of, of other people who are running as independents but are largely pro-government. I mean, isn't the, there a mirror picture on both sides of the spectrum? Well, I think that trend has already begun uh, some years ago. The whole political scene will be fragmented. I think that that mm. process of fragmentation will, con will continue. Uh, I, I guess uh, for each faction, the best they can do is to avoid ugly infighting, avoid bad-mouthing each other, so that uh, at least on the big picture, they still got um, the, the vote share and also the best possible number of seats that they got. Uh, there might be, of course, uh, there might be winners and losers uh, in different constituencies. But by and large, uh, if they are able to keep their uh, strength as a whole, that will be not bad. I mean, I think voters know how to coordinate. Like in the last uh, 2012 elections, in a family of three or four, they know how to coordinate. And that worked uh, quite well in some constituencies like, like, like anti-East. Uh, anti Benny Tai's idea will work only if, a big if, political parties uh, follow the, uh, uh, the rules. Uh, but the other if is that uh, uh, voters, uh, I think voters are, are wise enough. Now, but in fact, you are thinking of revising your plan, are you not? Yeah, actually, I agree with uh, Chris's uh, observation about that it's very difficult to have the parties to coordinate. And, but now, as a, a, as a version two of my original plan now, is that we can have the coordination among the voters. Now, uh, in the past behavior of voters, they might have some uh, strategic voting, but in a very dispersed way. But if we could like uh, have uh, a few thousand of uh, voters pledge that they will vote together in a particular district, and, and they will look at the, uh, the trend of the voting on the voting day. And at the last few hours, they make a recommendation to all the members who are pledged to vote in order to help some of the uh, 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 lists that they, that's a kind of marginal to win at the end, win the, uh, to be able to win the seat. Now, other people may be observing those 
those who have pledged it. So the impact will be much bigger and it will be a much more coordinated way of strategic voting rather than a very dispersed way of voting. Sometimes it works, sometimes it may not, but with a more coordinated uh, uh, kind of arrangements, and that's actually based on the experience of the Vote Together campaign in Canada in which uh, the Conservative Party was voted out, and this time we want to vote out the establishment. I'm sorry, we're out of time, but we'll be back after the break. We'll see you then. Welcome back. No one but the most charitable myopic observer would call the government's handling of Hong Kong's free-to-air TV scene a resounding success. Despite local viewers' interests, the government refused Ricky Wong's HTV a license and notwithstanding local audience concerns about its increasing mainland-oriented ownership, emphasis and programming, the government has allowed ATV to exist on virtual life support for months. It's even allowed the station to stay on air when it breached the rules of its contract and failed to pay its staff or indeed government charges. Now the writing is finally on the wall. For long-time employees at ATV, it's a question of, will the last one left please turn out the lights? The death throes have been protracted and painful. On Monday, ATV's professional liquidator, the accounting firm Deloitte, pushed to halt the station's broadcasts the following day and to sack 130 employees. In response, management level staff petitioned the High Court to be allowed to keep the station running until its free-to-air license expires at the end of the month. The High Court ruled on Thursday that the professional liquidator should continue taking necessary steps to avoid ATV incurring additional liabilities. After months of sporadic or no pay, 400 remaining staff members have received their termination letters. Time has run out for the six-decade-old broadcaster. Apart from delaying payments of wages and its license fees, the station also failed to broadcast Chinese-language news bulletins for two whole weeks last month. There have been no English newscasts since early February. Last week, the Communications Authority invoked procedures to suspend ATV's free TV license. Journalism scholar Dr. Grace Leung and legislator Chow Smock both see a need for the authority to react more promptly to infringements of the broadcasting ordinance. ATV failed to pay the license fee, as well as other penalties uh, that uh, was imposed by communication authority in the past uh, one or two years. And also it failed to pay the uh, employees the salary, uh, which may involve different government departments. Uh, but it seems that they are not so responsive in controlling or maybe press uh, ATV to fulfill a basic job as an employer. When the law is going to be reviewed in future, we got to look at this particular uh, uh, area, particularly the, the, the issue of whether or not uh, uh, emergency power or additional clauses needs to be put in the licenses of the licensees or additional powers needs to be put in the hands of the communications authority so that they can handle this sort of situation that will very likely occur uh, for a company uh, licensees toward the end of its uh, license term if it is not uh, being renewed. ATV's closure would leave TVB as Hong Kong's only free-to-air local TV station. RTHK has been drafted in to fill airtime on ATV's channels, but would fill additional resources. In addition, the regionally focused PCCW-owned VIEW TV will be available digitally and over the internet from early next month. Much of its content consists of South Korean and Japanese titles and reality shows. General Manager Lo Fai Lo hopes that such diversified programs will attract more viewers. 
會係中意睇啊某一類型嘅電視劇嘅，咁係好事啊！亦都有某一類型嘅觀眾，咦覺得而家暫時電視市場未必有啲嘢去啱睇嘅，咁我哋希望我哋 provide 呢啲咁樣嘅嘢，做大啲個餅咯。Claudia Mo is among those who have been vocally opposed to TVB's decision to use simplified Chinese characters to subtitle its Putonghua newscasts. She does believe that View TV could bring positive change to the existing TV landscape. Oh, they think uh, well. What new competition? Uh, View TV. Uh, what do they lack? Probably money, resources, manpower, or superstars. They are not uh, taking this new competitor too seriously, and uh, they just may have to pay the price. Maybe TV is judge uh, we are you based on maybe the previous experience. For any player who enter into the market, cannot be, cannot survive for long. So they so they believe to uh, we are you and we think. Oh, you can't challenge my um, hegemony. Uh, but I, I guess uh, even TVB itself has become shrinking in its influence in the whole uh, free-to-air TV market. So we are you may have a chance in this aspect. In the eyes of critics, it's a script so full of plot holes that even a neophyte scriptwriter would have been reluctant to commit these stories to paper. We're talking about the latest in the series of TV appearances after the extended mysterious disappearance of the five booksellers. Chinese authorities initially claimed that this was all about a hit-and-run incident that happened years ago. Later, Li Bo was smeared by a pro-Beijing legislator claiming that the case was related to his activities with prostitutes. Now, however, we're back to the story that this is really about books which are banned across the border. 點解我要咁神秘咧？咁就係因為咧，我呢次翻嚟內地咧，係配合呢個司法調查，咁就係需要指證一啲人嘅。Missing Hong Kong bookseller Li Bo appeared on Phoenix Television on Monday for the first time since his disappearance last December. Li stuck to a story he had previously given in three letters sent to his wife. Saying that he had gone to the mainland on his own accord. Confections of arrested people are commonly aired on China's state television. Finnis, however, is a private channel which broadcasts both in Hong Kong and on the mainland. I was scared that these people or their family members would know that they were there. So I would not want to let them know. 外界知道，亦都係唔想留低出入境嘅記錄嘅，咁所以咧我就係採用呢個偷渡嘅方式，咁就係因此咁我就冇帶回鄉證啦。我配合調查緊嘅咧就係呢個我公司嘅內部事務同埋啲員工嘅問題，啊咁仲有呢個桂敏海呢個人嘅犯罪問題嘅。所以呢，我們桂敏海 ，co-owner of publishing house Mighty Current, confessed. That he had explored ways to circumvent official inspections to operate his book trade in China. He also claims that he instructed Cheng Chiping, Lam Wenqi, and Liu Po to sell the books which had not been approved by the mainland's press and publication authority. Also on Monday, the three booksellers appeared in a televised interview. They pointed their fingers at Guai and said that they were instructed by him to distribute the unauthorized books. All three were granted bail pending trial and may be returning to Hong Kong soon. On Friday, the Hong Kong police confirmed that Liu Bo has returned to Hong Kong. The Guai Min Hai case is very serious. Um, according to um, various information uh, and pieces of evidence, uh, the, the Chinese uh, are investigating Guai Minhai as a uh, potentially espionage case. Uh, and also, the Xi Jinping administration is anxious to find out who has leaked the information to Guai Minhai. Are these people political enemies of Xi Jinping who have leaked embarrassing information which could be used to, um, to destroy uh, Xi Jinping's reputation? The televised interviews of booksellers came just a few days before the start of Chinese parliamentary meetings in Beijing. Some people believe the televised interviews are intended to ease pressure on the central government. 
Many Hong Kong delegates to these meetings have said that there is no need to pursue this matter because Li has admitted that he voluntarily returned to the mainland and was not adopted. On January 18th, I wrote into the General Secretary of the National People Congress, urging them to have relevant authorities come up and clarify whether Li Bo's mysterious transformation or transfer from Hong Kong to Samjuan involved Chinese officials enforcing Chinese law in Hong Kong. It's just very simple. It's either yes or no. Despite um, whatever statements uh, Li Bo has made, uh, most likely under duress, um, the case is far from soft, and I think the uh, Siva Long administration um, has to answer many questions, including uh, whatever communications uh, that have been uh, conducted between uh, the Hong Kong police and the mainland law enforcement agencies. Well, that's it for this week. We'll end with some images of the continuing ATV saga, a tale of life support and beyond. As for us, we'll definitely be back next week. See you then. Goodbye. No,